Hi, I'm Ellie with Mountain Hood Craft, and I want to show you a couple of the HDPE reusable molds that I use for making wood and resin charcuterie boards, serving trays, cribbage boards, coasters, that kind of thing. I'll show you a little bit of the pros and cons with each of them. Here are a few of the molds that I have. This is what we had been using for years and years. This is our handmade, um, covered with tape. You can use packing tape. Um, you can unscrew them and reuse them, put them back together. You seal them with caulking. And um, they've lasted a long time, but they start falling apart. This one's actually pretty good. And over time, I just got tired of replacing the tape. You can see kind of over here that, um, I don't have good light right here, but um, the, the tape kind of pulls up. It gets lumpy on the bottom after time, and I was finding myself constantly kind of fixing and having to do a lot of prep with this before pouring. And so um, we had a lot of these larger sizes for trays, and they just started falling apart after a year or two, and I just decided I didn't want to mess with the caulking. I didn't want to have to take so much care of them, and so um, I invested in some... Uh, reusable HDPE molds that I got online. One thing that I do with all of my molds is um, I number them. You see that one has a number down on the bottom. Uh, and this one here is for cribbage boards and they are labeled A, B, C, and D. Um, when I'm planning out a pour, I'll have a board and I write down kind of what color combinations I'm planning on doing, the amount of resin that I need for each one, and that sort of thing. So I, I have them all labeled. And then I also have calculated the volume and how much resin I'll need for each tray. So I know this size tray, this is uh, 20 and a half by 12 and a half. And if I were to fill it up to one and a half, or sorry, one and a quarter inch of resin only, full of resin, it would take 177 ounces of resin. So then it's easy for me if I put a piece of wood in here that takes up about 50%, I can just do 50% of 177 and calculate how much resin I'll need for the mold. Um, if I do, you know, more wood to resin, I figure, oh, it's about a third resin, and then I'll do, um, you know, 0.3 times 177 and figure out how many ounces I need for that mold. And that's really helpful, um, especially when I'm doing multiple pours to figure out how many, um, buckets I need to mix up a resin. And I do that over here with the cribbage boards as well. Um, and here I have it written out. If they were each, this is for individual one, if this one was filled up one inch, it would take 42 ounces of resin to completely fill one inches in each um, square or rectangle. If I do an inch and a quarter, 63 ounces per. So that helps me um, calculate and keep those straight. So a little bit about the, the two molds. The one over here that is for cribbage boards is made by six by, six by 13 Woodworking, and they're based out of Texas, and I ordered it off of Etsy. I, um, I had it custom made so that I could do the four cribbage boards at a time. I, there wasn't anything out, out there like that. I had made my own, but I was, it was not um, standing up to test of time so I, I wanted a more stable one so I had them custom make this for me um, and the one on the right here is Ahanui Artisans I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right they're very active on um, Instagram and uh, this is their standard 20 and a half by 12 and a half and I have six of these and I also have four of their smaller ones which are um, 18 by eight and a half um, and they're both excellent companies, both responsive and reply to messages on time and really shipped promptly, um, did all the custom write up on this and um, sent me the specs and moved along quickly. And so both companies were excellent and, and great to work with. And I highly recommend either of them from that respect. The first one that I'm gonna go into detail about is the oh Ahanui Artisans. Um, it's got levels on two of the sides, that one and this one here. Um, they both do. I think a lot of them have the levels built in. So it's got the levels on both sides. It's got feet 
that, um, oh, that one's stuck, uh, feet that twist to raise and lower so that you can um, adjust the level and they're, they're easy to, to twist. Uh, it also has a rail system. They both have rail systems um, for you to, um, you know, squish down your wood so that it doesn't float up and keep the wood in place while you're doing your pour. What is so cool about the Ahanui, I really should figure out how to pronounce that, but what is so cool about this brand is that it is a no seal mold. So you can kind of see here, there's this, the red lines. <coughs> That's a gasket that they have put in so that you don't have to use caulking, which is pretty amazing. And I think it's the only company out there that has these. And it was the primary reason that we ordered so many of them because, um, I really, we were having to pour so much to keep up with, uh, art shows and whatnot, which is a great problem to have, but it was becoming problematic to have to wait for the caulking to dry, um, and all of that. And so when they announced that they had these ones that did not require sealing, they're no seal type, we kind of jumped right on it. So, um... I'll take it off and show you. You can see the gasket that goes around here. They're not 100% perfect. You can see that here, there's a little resin there that had poked through or had seeped through. Um, and I have this, on, you know, every so often during a pour, I'll see after I take it apart that there's a little film of some resin that got through. And... Um, when that happens, I don't know if it's the right thing to do or not, but when that happens, I just kind of, I will take the gasket out and clean it off and kind of plump it up a little bit. They get a little flattened in there. And so I think that that's when the, the resin can maybe slip by. So um, I just push it back in and after I clean it off. Um, I've had a couple of leaks with these where, you know, it leaked out onto the table. Um, it was easy to, to maintain. When I saw the, where the leak was coming from, I just squished some uh, paper towel and set it down so that it was kind of squished on that area. Um, and it stopped um, right away and it wasn't a big problem as long as I <laughs> found it right away. Um, so, uh, you know, they, like I said, we have six of them. We pour a couple of times a week and, uh, you know, I've had two more, I guess, major leaks and multiple little tiny ones that are almost close calls, but haven't really done any damage. So, um, those are the, that's the no seal. It's really fantastic to not have to deal with, um, silicone. So you saw how I took it apart. Um, and that was of course really easy to do because there was nothing in it, but when it's filled, when it's, when you have a piece in here that is cured and you take one side off. You only need to take one side off, which is cool. Um, you do really have to kind of loosen up the seal around the mold. So you whack, I whack the sides, whack the back, and you can kind of hear a snap when it's separated from the piece. Um, and that is what you want. And then I go in with the uh, little scraper and kind of bang it up underneath a little bit and then it pops right out. I do still use a mold release because it helps. This is the one I use. Um, I, I do use it without, I forget sometimes and it's fine. It works, but it is just a little easier when I do use the mold release. So, um, and the thing with having an HDPE mold, either whatever kind you get, it is so nice when you demold and it's like, there is so little, excess resin on your piece. So it takes much less trimming and flattening because everything is so sleek and trim. Um, and I love them. So to put them back on, you do the same thing, put the wall on. We'll pretend that I put the wall on. Um, let me talk a little bit about the rail system on this, the Ahanui ones. So the way it works is you put a piece of wood down. We'll pretend this wood is the right size, but if I wanted this piece of wood to stay down, 
um, you put down, the, it comes with little blocks of additional H, HDPE that you would lay on top of your wood. And then you take their bar that it comes with and you, um, you know, oops, attach it to the, you put the screws in and screw it down. <clears throat> it comes with these little black small knobs that you tighten down on either side. And it holds, holds the wood down so the wood doesn't go anywhere. Very cool. The problem that I have with these molds, as you can tell, maybe by my workspace and by the amount of resin that you see on the top of everything, I am not a tidy pourer. I like to mix colors. I like to add colors. And these rails are so um, kind of fitting. Let me see if I can get in there a little bit. The rails fit really snug around the bolt. And so when there is the littlest drop of resin in there, it doesn't want to move. Um, so that can be frustrating <laughs> for me. They should come out. You know, they usually do come out. Um, but I do have a couple that I can't get, <laughs> I can't get the bolts out of. So, uh, this might be one of them that I just can't get it out of. So all of their molds come with a nifty little screwdriver. I have like 12 of them now, and you can also use it to clean the rails. So I'll come in after a pour and you can... I can get the any resin that's fallen down in there, but sometimes there's just stub, stubborn spots or um, oh, there's a good big piece that was down in that crack. Um, so that is one thing that I would say is a, a, a negative or a downside of this mold compared with the other one um, is just that there's not any wiggle room in these rails um, for messy pourers like myself. Um, so sometimes they get stuck. And you also saw that the, one of the legs didn't move when I was, um, trying to adjust <clears throat> the foot on it. And that was <clears throat> from one of the leaks, one of the leaks that I had that was right by this foot and it got stuck on the metal. And so that one doesn't go anywhere. So it's all right. It has its home. It has like a little notch on my table where it fits perfectly because it cured <laughs> in it. Um, and I just adjust the other legs. Um, but that happens sometimes. So <clears throat> what I love about this is that you don't have to seal it. You don't have to use any caulking. Um, it's well made. HDPE is great to work with. Um, I don't particularly love the rails compared with the other one that I have, which I will show you now. So over here is the six by 13 woodworking uh, <clears throat> mold. And because this was custom made for me, I don't know, um, you know, I don't know their, their dimensions on other pieces. They made this one for me with 15 by five so that I could do four cribbage boards at a time. But I know that they also have regular, uh, you know, standard size molds. And um, one of the differences between the two companies is that six by 13 does do custom orders and take custom molds and their pricing was was good with that ahanui the the no seal company um they don't do any custom orders custom molds they're busy with other things that they have going on and uh, that's just not something that they're up for doing right now so if you're looking for custom i recommend the six by 13. so it works similarly to the other one you take off um one of the sides now because i have the slats going this way and I'm messy, but I also like to work as little as possible with taking these things apart. My hands, uh, I'm also a sign language interpreter, so I, uh, my hands get stiff and sore and I don't wanna overwork them. So for this, each of these, I've just decided I leave everything in place. They're all bolted down. So I could take the whole thing apart. I could choose to take the whole thing apart and remove the dividers and use it as a tray or just, put one in and have the half, um, 
have two smaller trays if I wanted to. Um, but I, like you heard me say before, I don't like caulking. I don't like messing with it all and putting it back together. And as few screws as I need to undo, um, the fewer the better. So I took some extra precautions with this because it does need caulking. Um, and I don't take the whole thing apart. I put caulking all around the outside, all around every little thing because I didn't want to take a chance that it would um, leak. And it has not leaked at all um, for me. Um, so I think I usually have one side that I try to always take off that same side whenever I pour, just for consistency. Um, this one, so my one negative, <laughs> I guess, well, aside from, oh, this doesn't fit. Aside from uh, it, me having to seal it, which I don't love, um, but you know, I mean, that's what most people do. Aside from having to seal it, it has so many bolts to have to undo that um, I don't know if that's, it's pro probably because it was a custom order. They have, you know, three for the dividers, but even if the dividers weren't there, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then on each side, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you were going to take it apart fully each time, that's a lot of screwing and unscrewing. And I would just as soon have, you know, oh, Alhanui over here, they have one, two, three, four on their side. Um, I like to live on the edge and have a few less screws to have to, or hex nets, whatever they're called, to have to undo each time. So there you can see how they're made. I can see a little bit of resin. Nope, that's not even a thing. So, but that's a lot of screws for me. <laughs> but I'll be honest, it is my daughter's job to come out and unscrew and de or take the take all the screws off of all the molds. She uh, and put them back together again. So she does that. And like I said, I believe in the instructions. You're supposed to take off three sides or two sides. I don't. And, um, when I first put them together, I sealed up all around the edges. I put extra, you know, I do caulk the whole thing, but, um, I only remove one side and it works just fine for me. So, um, one way that I can cut corners. Oh, I guess the other thing that I do wish, <laughs> well, I guess, I guess it doesn't really matter depends on which way you're taking it off, but I would like for this big piece here in front to be across, the one that went across the whole way so I didn't have to do the two sides. However, I'm sure that had I asked for that in when I was working with them on making this custom, that they would have done that. I just didn't really know what, what I liked or didn't like at that point in a HDPE mold because it was my first time really I hadn't, I hadn't really had the other ones for very long when I ordered this one. I'm going to pause it while I do this. Okay. So I didn't put them all in. I'll have my daughter do it tomorrow, but pretend they're all in. Let me show you about the rails. So the rails with six by 13 are, I, I like these a lot better. You can see when I put the bolt in that there's a lot more give in there. Um, and so it slides a lot easier. Even if I have resin that has dropped down here, um, the, the bolt, the bolt, bolt screw, bolt, whatever it is, the bolt <laughs> can go over it and can get to the, the place where I want. I also like their bars because their bars have the open ends on them. And so it makes it easy. Say I've gotten one that I didn't take off of the, of the twisty, the knob. Um, I can, I can still slide it where I want to go, insert one end over there, insert the other end over here. Um, they're not very long, uh, but I don't need them any longer because they, I have, they, they sent me enough so that I can do one or two with each board and, you know, they're long enough that I can go diagonally across the boards if I want. Um, 
I also really like these large, the large um, twists. Just kind of a, I mean, I, I didn't dislike the smaller ones. I didn't know that I was, you know, oh, bummed with the small ones. But when I got the bigger ones, I was like, oh, these are kind of nice. So, um, so I really like these rails. And I've actually thought about getting some of these rails. I know you can get them separate. I thought about getting some and just putting them on the Ahanui, um, which I might do if I get extra frustrated with it one day. Um, so the pros of the 6x13 for me are really the rail system, the fact that they did the custom order. Um, both, both molds are really well made. Um, they both have similar um, feet that you can screw up uh, up and down um, to adjust the level. Um, I think that this 6x13 ones go up a little higher, which can be good for getting air circulation on the bottom. Um, but you do have to caulk and wait for the caulking to dry on these and on most molds. I think the Ahonui is the only company that I know out there that you don't have to seal. And that's, that's you know, that's a big deal. Lastly, I will show you just because I have it, the silicone molds. So you see silicone molds there, you know, they're flexible. And I've only used this <coughs> a handful of times. It is Resty Designs. Um, and you can kind of see already it's bowing out a little bit. Um, I use this mold for coasters and I like it a lot. And it for the price, um, you know, the fact that it's bowing out does not bother me because they're a lot less expensive than the HDPE. Um, don't make the mistake that I did gluing, trying to glue down your, your wood with silicone on a silicone mold. <laughs> it adhered to it, but, um, it didn't, I mean, I can still pour it. It's so flat and small. It doesn't matter, but that's what that's from. So don't use silicone to hold down your wood with these. You do have to hold your wood down some other way. I use weights, rocks, have all different kinds of things that I use for holding down the wood. And then it just pops right out. So, a silicone mold is nice. They do, you know, they can stretch, which in some ways is nice because, um, let me see. If you have a piece of wood, well, these are all too thin. Um, well, if you had a piece that was, this is four and a half, but if this piece was like five, you could squish it kind of diagonally. Like I could wedge this in there and that would hold down the wood. Um, so I wouldn't have to put any weights on it. How, you know, if, if I had a piece that I, I typically will cut my pieces to four and a half so that I can squeeze them between this so that I don't have to, um, so I don't have to weigh them down. Of course, a lot of the pieces I use, you know, ones like this where there's resin going to be in the middle and so I don't have the tension so then I, I do use the weights for that but you know silicone molds are nice they're not as expensive but they do have they can have some flexibility to them um you don't have to caulk them you don't have to seal them um but they're not as tidy as the HDP and I, I don't think they last as long either so there you go there are the molds that I use six by thirteen Ahonui, handmade, and Rusty Design Silicone. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to do another video showing more details.